Good afternoon everyone. In uh, today's video I'm glad to show you and present for you uh, my new uh, book Revit Parametric Design, uh, Revit Families for Beginner and um, this book is now available on Amazon.com and the book is uh, actually uh, talking about uh, how basic steps to create Revit uh, family furniture and Revit family elements and how the architectural component and interior component uh, can be modeled uh, in a smart way where you can create your own furniture uh, in a very easy way in step-by-step uh, -step examples where you can make products um, that can change actually can design in any level you want to change the dimension of the uh, dimension of the objects, the height, the property, the visibility, and uh, lots of uh, other features that explain in detail in this book. Uh, the book is, um, uh, you know, have seven chapters, and uh, each chapter will talk about specific architecture, uh, or actually do a specific architecture and interior elements, um, and each one of them. Uh, has been explained in detail uh, as a techniques or a basic techniques. For example, at the beginning you'll, feel, you'll find your you know, the basic uh, modeling technique, which is a single plane extrusion, and what type of geometries you can model with this uh, with this technique. And I have a real life uh, scenario furniture that I got uh, at home and a lot of uh, other shops like IKEA shops and how you step by step can be create these elements and how you can get um, the, the best out of that so you can not only have a physical model of a table as you can see but you can change that model anytime uh, to any dimension you want and not only that but also explain how you can create presets for these types of elements and you can store them and use them in an easy way inside uh, Revit so you don't need to keep changing that manually just call for the X and Y and Z and the type of uh, surfaces that you want the type of thickness and the type of thickness of the legs uh, every single detail here can be model um, and that book is actually uh, uh, having tables in the beginnings and and it show you about that this is the second technique how you create a multi uh, plane extrusion and another example now we have more curvature object like a circular table uh, you can find I think the first table uh, uh, available on my channel and the, here you have found some more details and in, in related to that how you can create um, this table and how you end up by having the final geometries uh, done for you uh, the book also can show you some, uh, you know, uh, some uh, life uh, cases for uh, famous tables from different manufacturer. Here I just model them and some hints for you as an, as an example. This book is uh, great if you want to use it as a textbook to, to teach Revit, um, in, uh, Revit interior and Revit architecture family making. It's not really as uh, good for uh, a Revit environment, but instead it's really good for those who want to learn the, fam the family making. So it doesn't talk about Revit uh, elementary or Revit uh, project environment where you design walls and windows, but rather that it's focused on how you make your own uh, furniture. This is, again, could be useful for product designer and interior designer and architects. Uh, these are samples of images that I shot in real life scenario and I found in lots of uh, furniture shops uh, and uh, there's some hints and uh, tips on how you make those uh, elements. Uh, the book is uh, also talking about uh, much more complicated, each, 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 each level or each chapter will give more and more uh, complex geometry. Here we go with the more uh, curved elements and again a curved table and a curved chair. Uh, lots of techniques actually uh, the other chapter showing how you model a bookshelf and um, you know in the final results you can just make any geometries for that uh, bookshelf uh, whether you can al align them horizontally or vertically how you make uh, two levels uh, array and how you can manipulate that to get the uh, any if it's uh, any type of bookshelf you can make it close and op or open 
uh, align them horizontally or vertically or just make two dimension or array in dimension you want uh, you can change the thickness of the wood if you like uh, put a cover on the back or make it full transparent all this option uh, can be made and here a suggestion this is my uh, living room uh, uh, wall units uh, that's from Ikea as far as I remember and I model that uh, again with the same uh, with the same family that I explained just some add-on and tips and tricks for it you can have a you can follow the tips of that I'm uh, providing here so lots of uh, lots of elements in here lighting fixture polar array systems uh, here much more complicated geometries and that's for a different uh, f uh, type of families where you can uh, go ahead and decide how many uh, leg you have or how many side you have in this element you can make that parametrically change and explaining with more uh, you know uh, a real life examples following the same technique of course here and uh, like a sweep plus the polar array in the same time and here you get to get this results and that's a, a lots of um, uh, tips and tricks you can find in that dining table design and how you can create complex geometries based on the previous model that you have uh, learned and how you can make smart elements here the table this chapter is just an assembly and uh, can show you how you can make um, a, a, a complex family based on the previous element you learned and that's really yeah, that will really be a good a, a good thing to have a look at uh, due to the fact that you sometimes need to you know create um, a complex geometry out of a previous models or previous family so how you can make a complex family and really an interesting topic uh, it's a 251 page and you can see now in the, the possibilities that run and you can create uh, from these types of elements still not really a hundred percent smarter geometries in this chapter the other chapter will explain how you can make a more advanced flexing techniques where you can design uh, your own constant train your own parameter and put some basic algorithm basic parametric algorithm uh, because the previous chapter was talking just parametric modeling uh, uh, without the interference of a complex uh, formulas here we can have our own formulas that can prevent the errors if you provide uh, an incorrect width for the table it's gonna fix it or give you a warning message or just ignore the incorrect values that you can put and cause this family to crash uh, it can sense the length of the table and it can increase the amount of uh, chairs based on the length you provide so you don't need to, to worry about the chair how many chair you need and you don't need to do that manually anymore uh, I pick some of the parameters of course not all of them because uh, it's gonna be a uh, too long chapter if I want to design that you can find that in chapter 6 actually and the more you uh, you look at the more you, you, you get advanced in this techniques and more you can able more smarter uh, families or complex family that prevent you uh, from or any other user from getting the incorrect uh, uh, inputs and causing crushes and an error that you don't want to see in your family design uh, the last chapter will talk about the visibility how you can uh, combine more than one uh, element into into two and uh, instead of making two elements you can make one family and this one family can change uh, its top its material anything you like actually and I prepare some uh, some examples here in, in Revit uh, for the end up result you should get for example this table I think this uh, uh, it's have the ability to, you know, uh, store two families in the same time. You just change the visibility of the top part of it, and that can goes for, uh, you know, uh, top with a glass panel, or you change the other one back to full solid top. Beside, of course, the ability to change its main parameter here. If you go to the setting, and you can change uh, almost everything you want. And instead of a 500 maybe you can make it a 750 and instead of the um, I don't know the overall height instead of a 700 you can make it like a 450 I don't know just a whatever whatever information you can provide and you can get a bigger and different uh, table as you can see 
based on the feedback that or the inputs or the parameter you can feed. Uh, this one is a very basic example for the table that I show you. This one, uh, I pick up some of the parameters and I apply the advanced flexibility techniques for them. So uh, let me check. Um, maybe the, um, see the chair radius or sorry, the chair length. It's a 500. So if you go and provide like a 50 for the chair, uh, it's, uh, it's not actually going to 50 millimeter. But rather, it's keep the minimum requirement based on the care, based on whatever you provided here information. It's not going to break the radius that you put and just prevent you from getting uh, the incorrect value. While if you put uh, a number like a 500, which is more than the minimum requirement for that chair, it will allow you, you know, to do this, uh, th this width. You can even you can even add a maximum allowance. So if the user uh, incorrectly provide a bigger value than the chair should be again it can be prevent that as you can see uh, prevent that type of errors same thing for the uh, table itself and the table itself is smart enough so you can if you need to change uh, the table length for example you see i provided uh, a 300 which is an incorrect value but it's still uh, have its own uh, parameter uh, fixed. It's not not going to crash. Uh, if I add a 1,000 again, nothing. Let's go to 2,000. And now uh, we should see that the length is accepting this value. And if you have some kind of a critical uh, parameter, I think it's 2,200. If you pass that level based on the the chair distances, the minimum uh, uh, gaps you provide in here. Uh, you can uh, actually get yourself to get uh, I'm just step-by-step step increasing uh, you get yourself uh, an extra chair automatically without the need to go back explode or ungroup and then add a chair which is a boring business to be done if, especially if you are in a hurry and you want to increase that and you don't know the spaces you are designing for so uh, th that's this that's the thing I'm talking about is, you know you can make a smart family that prevent you as a user or other user from inputting an incorrect value accidentally uh, adjust itself at, and when it's increased in one dimension it can increase and affect the other elements center the elements to a specific dimension uh, of course this is not a hundred percent fully parametric for all the parameter it will or fully uh, advanced flex for all the parameter uh, but the advanced flexing techniques you're going to learn in this book is applied for a couple of elements, of course, just to reduce the size of uh, the, f the book, actually. Uh, but I believe if you learn the technique, you will be able to apply that to all the parameters. So there is no a margin for error can be happen when you design your, um, you know, your uh, work. And you can get um, you can get that also in the X and Y applied here in only in one direction, but you can do that in the two direction, so you get more than a raise in the two X and Y dimension for the table. So this is it, guys. I wish that you uh, you will uh, support this uh, book, and the book is available on Amazon.com again. I just said that in the beginning, so you can go ahead and uh, buy it. I think sixty uh, sixty five dollar. Uh, it's available now. I just released the book, I think, two days ago or three days ago, 2nd of February. Actually, I uploaded 2nd of February, but approved on the 4th or 5th. So it's uh, three days online now. And I wish that you find this uh, video uh, useful. And I'm looking forward to your support and buying that book. Thank you very much uh, for supporting me. And see you in the next video. Bye-bye.